Chef David Jarvis leads off from his American eatery, Melange, in Northfield, Illinois. It's a handsome appetizer, vegetable and lentil terrine. Then from Goodfellas in Minneapolis, Kevin Cullen cooks the entree. It features a grilled T-bone of venison with barbecued plums and wild rice coleslaw. Finally, Todd Johnson from the Ritz-Carlton Naples prepares a complex dessert of chocolate mousse with ginger creme brulee and pineapple carpaccio. Melange is a spacious operation in Northfield, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. Chef owner David Jarvis, a Johnson and Wales graduate, received serious training from Jean Bachet at the famous La Francaise and was Wolfgang Puck in California. His appetizer is a vegetable and lentil terrine. I'm using a terrine mold like this that's going to be lined with leeks and then the vegetables inside it, garnished with a little salad and a little vinaigrette. So the first thing I did in advance is cook some red lentils and some diced potatoes just to expedite this. Both of these should be cooked uh, to the touch, a little bit crisp but not raw. First thing, blanch your leeks, which I've taken the leek, split it open and taken the very center out so they have wide leaves. One of the vegetables in the terrine is diced zucchini. There is machines out there like mandolins and such that you can do to expedite this step. And then once we have the julienne, we go the other direction and we dice it. You want it small enough so when it's in the terrine that all the sizes are somewhat uniform. Fresh basil is chopped. Yeah, I'd go back and check my leaves. They need a couple more moments. And I'll start getting my pans hot to cook the mushrooms in the zucchini. The mushrooms are oyster and shiitake. Splitting up the basil, mixing a little into both pans. Now that the leeks are ready, I'll put those into an ice bath to shock the leeks so it stays nice and green. Checking my mushrooms and zucchini, stir them so that they have uniform cooking. Trying not to add additional fat to or oil or butter to the pan helps so the mushrooms don't get too greasy and actually release some of their own liquids which will intensify the flavor. You want a nice golden color on the zucchini, if possible. You can eat zucchini raw, so they don't have to be cooked too well done. What I'm doing now is just drying the leek so that there's not excessive water in the terrine. Now the cooked lentils, mushrooms, zucchini, and cubed potato are combined. Now we have all these vegetables together. We'll let those just sit for a moment. The mold is lined with the leek leaves. We'll put these in and we'll overlap them a little bit. If they start to fall in or cave in, that won't matter as we're putting the vegetables in. It'll hold them and support them. Meanwhile, a gelatin leaf is softened or bloomed in warm water. Ultimately, the gelatin will dissolve in the warm water. Then I pour that over the vegetable mixture and stir it together. I'll fill the terrine. Kind of messy, but the end result is worth the trouble.
Once the terrain is filled, then what we need to do is press, press it down to put the last little bit of vegetables in it. And then we'll weigh this down overnight and then tomorrow unmold it and be able to serve this. What I do is I use a napkin on top and then I'll put cardboard on it and then weigh it down. The napkin absorbs any excess liquid coming out of the terrain. Mixed greens are dressed with sherry vinegar and olive oil. Salt and pepper. A sauce for the terrine is reduction of tangerine and mandarin orange juice and balsamic vinegar. It's down to a syrup, which is what I want. I'll pour this into a, a cup. Add my curry oil. Stir it together. And I spoon it around the plate. And the effect will be one of looking at a yellow curry oil with like what I call an oil slick. Wonderful flavors. Goodfellows in downtown Minneapolis was voted second in Gourmet's 1998 Reader's Poll for the Twin Cities area. The executive chef, Kevin Cullen, was born and raised in Minnesota. He has worked in Texas also, most notably at the mansion on Turtle Creek. His entree is venison with plums. An oriental coleslaw begins with julienne baby bok choy, Chinese cabbage. Snow peas. You can cut them either in julienne or just cut them in a little bias here. Napa cabbage. Red cabbage. Cut out the tougher vein of it and then just roll it up like you would shift an odd something and then just cut it fine. That goes in the salad. That's some good color there for you. The Japanese radish, daikon. So it's a long kind of a Japanese bias cut. So it gives your, it's going to give your coleslaw some good structure. Carrot. Mustard greens. A little more. Then the Japanese herb shiso. You put them in the salad. Finally, pre cooked wild rice is added. The next thing we're going to make is barbecued plums. And this goes great with venison, it's going to go great with the slaw. And uh, it's a good summer, fresh taste. It's, what you do is you take plums with a little bit of oil and you brush them with oil and then you roast them. 
to this consistency right here. And what happens is that the skin is peeling off of the plum and they've sweetened up. These are black beauties. And you roast them to about this consistency right there. Refrigerate them overnight and they're gonna come out looking just like this. A lot of the juice is coming out of them, a lot of the sugar, and it, it's all sitting in kind of a syrup. The roasted plums are seeded, sectioned, and green onion is added. Add them to the plums. You just splash a little tamari in there, which is a kind of like a soy sauce. It has a, a little less salt in it. Splash it with tamari. And then you take, we, we have some homemade barbecue here that we're just gonna splash right in there also. What you can also do with this, if you wanted to, and this would work also, it would be to, to uh, put them on the grill too. You can oil them and grill them a little bit if you have your grill going. Finish it with a little ginger, a little more ginger juice. Oh. And the ginger you can take after you've, after you've squeezed the juice out and put it into vinegar or oil if you want to make an oil or something like that so you don't throw away any of the grape or any of the pulp. And then stir this up. The T-bone cut of some farm-raised venison is grilled. It comes from Chisago City, which is not a mispronunciation of Chicago. It's a small town north of the Twin Cities. What he's doing now is he's brushing on a, uh, a chili brush, which is made out of soy sauce, molasses, chili paste, chili powder, garlic, and a little lime. So he's marking the meat and then brushing the, the brush on there just to, to baste it a little bit, to give it a little flavor. So what you want to do next is dress the slaw. The slaw is dressed with an orange juice and oil-based mixture that includes ginger juice, molasses, and cilantro. And after you dress it, you want to add the cashews. And you're going to add a lot of these. The nuts are roasted and laced with cayenne pepper. And then you have your plums ready. It's time for service. You're just going to want to scoop a pretty good, decent size of this, because this is your starch and your vegetable on the plate. A lot of those cayenne cashews. And you, what you want to watch out for is the rice is going to go to the bottom of the bowl. So you're going to want to make sure that you take it in and get the rice, scoop it out of the bottom to the top. OK? Next thing you're going to do is lay down some plums. And what you want to do is just spoon them on the plate a little bit. scallions on top of there. And don't be afraid to use a little of that barbecue on there. The next thing what you want to do is we have a little rice paper for the garnish and just kind of offset it a little bit so it comes off the side. And then you just want to set your T-bone up and push it up against the slaw. And then this thing is thick, so we can almost stand it or let it sit on its side. See? And then we have a little bit of a, some kawari here that you can just kind of sprinkle on the plate. And then if you really love cashews like, like I do, you can make a little noise and throw them on there. All right, the, the steaks on the plate, you have your plum, barbecue plum, cashews, some daikon sprouts, and of course your uh, wild rice. And, Cashew coleslaw. Now this is the brush that you're putting on there. And what you want to do is just take a little bit of that and put it over that steak there and have it drizzle all the way down.
The Ritz-Carlton Naples in Florida is a hotbed of pastry talent. Not unusual given the demands of the big hotel, the pastry chef is Todd Johnson, a CIA graduate who worked in Fort Myers and Clearwater before joining the Ritz-Carlton staff. His dessert is chocolate mousse with ginger creme brulee. The two key elements in this multi-layered dessert are a chocolate mousse and ginger banana creme brulee. The brulee is started by poaching some sliced ginger. Then sliced bananas go into heavy cream. The cream is warmed and infused with the banana. I'm gonna add the ginger. The slices were obviously drained. And let this begin to heat. In the meantime, I can combine my sugar and egg yolks. And I want to be softening my gelatin at this point also, which is going to, what is going to bind this brulee up. It's not going to be baked in the oven as a traditional creme brulee. Rather, it's going to have a small amount of gelatin. And then it's going to be molded and frozen. And that's going to be inside the interior of the chocolate mousse. So the cold will, will keep it together. You'll see it's going to be very liquid when I put it into the, uh, the form. Now, after infusing, I'm going to return this to a boil. I'm going to add a bit of my cream to the yolks and sugar. This is called tempering, gradually bringing the yolks to temperature. Then I'm going to return the yolks and sugar back to the pan and continue cooking it to 181 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it's very important that I stir constantly and monitor the temperature that I don't overcook this. Note the chef's use of a probe thermometer. And when I reach the required temperature, I'm going to remove it from the heat and continue to stir it quickly so that I don't have the opportunity to curdle the eggs. I'm going to let it cool just a bit. Then I need to remove my ginger before I puree it. Before pureeing, a softened gelatin sheet is added. You'll see when that hits the warmth, it's going to dissolve immediately. Using a stick processor, the chef purees the bananas with the brulee mixture. The mixture is forced through a fine mesh sieve, then piped into flexipan molds. Freeze for at least two hours or until the brulee is solid. The method used for the chocolate mousse is similar to that used with the brulee. Milk, not cream, is heated just to boiling. Egg yolks and sugar are combined, then tempered with the hot liquid, and then returned to the pan. Milk back on the fire. And when my yolk mixture is nice and smooth, I'm going to return that to the heat. And then I'm going to stir continuously till this reaches a temperature of 181 Fahrenheit or 83 degrees Celsius. Again, using a probe thermometer, the yolk mixture is thickened. You can see that it's becoming thicker. Now I've reached my temperature. I want to get it off the fire immediately and pour it into the chocolate. This is chopped milk chocolate. I'm going to go ahead and whisk that in and get the chocolate melting. Essentially, the chef is developing a ganache. The ganache is finished with a stick processor, then heavy cream whipped to soft peaks is added. Just going to add 100 percent of the cream and whisk it right in. Flexipan molds are then filled two-thirds of the way with the mousse mixture. Then the frozen brulee is added. Here's my frozen brulee. I'm going to pop them out. I'm going to push this in. Now 
The base of the dome is a baked coconut meringue disc called biscuit. The brulee is covered with more chocolate mousse. The biscuit base goes on. Lay them in place. Just press it down gently. Freeze for at least four hours. The frozen dome is sprayed with a cocoa butter chocolate mixture. Then presentation begins with pineapple slices that were macerated for five days in a witch's brew of water, lemon, orange juice, rum, star anise, cinnamon, vanilla bean, cloves, saffron, sugar, and jalapeno pepper. Sprayed timbal in the center. Pieces of fresh raspberry garnish. This is some of my, my poaching liquid. I'm just gonna drizzle around on the plate. And you could garnish this any way you desire. I'm gonna use a little chocolate. Some chocolate twill. Try that again. 